at the first hearing of this piece as a teenager, I immediately fell in love with it. What is so special about this piece? That's what I would like to share now. First, this is one of the most beautiful pieces in many aspects that Liz had written. Its melody is so simple and so sincere, moving at spacious pacing and having a harp-like accompaniment. Its harmony is also simple but fresh, so well constructed to evoke a meditative atmosphere that escalates to a very exaltation. The choice of tonality F sharp majors, the furthest distance from natural C majors, has its peculiar nuances to amplify the religious solitary confinement. Without the extra musical connections, the music itself is already captivating, having the melody in the lower register, cello-like melody. And hovering above that is the harp-like accompaniment. The F sharp tonality helps the pianist to play this accompaniment figurations having most of these double notes in the black keys. But beside that, the key F sharp has particular color that fits well to reflect heavenly realm or the divinity. Here is a quick look at another piece of the same tonality. At the center of this Lesiodo alla Villa de Est or Fountains of Villa de Est, let's inscribe the Gospel first John 4 14 about Jesus Christ as the living water. And here is the sections from Dante Sonata which speaks of the heaven. In this Dante Sonata, Liz was even more specific in using the F sharp major tonality. Every time when the music speaks about hell, it goes to D minor. Every time when the music speaks about heaven, it goes to F sharp major. Let's look at other musical matters in this opening. The subdominant chord that comes next reminds us of the same heavenly Amen from Legal Cadence. The steadiness of the pedal point as the bass line contributes to the contemplative atmosphere and secure feeling of the opening. But what even more special about this piece is the fact how sensitive Liszt was in transcribing the message from the literature into music. Truly, Liszt is the unparalleled master in this area. For a list, it is far more than a mere craftsmanship. It is indeed his life. The way he speaks about his own inner life, his thoughts, his stories, his ideals, his longings, etc. is through the extra musical associations, such as the literature. List was the pioneer for programmatic music. It means that a musical composition has its extra musical connections, most often to the literature, painting, or elements of nature, such as water in Le Chiodo alla Villa de Est. In this field, Liszt was on the opposite league of Brahms and Chopin. Brahms and Chopin as the purists intended music only for music alone, while Liszt in his cosmopolitan nature preferred to embrace all aspects of art into music. Liszt's father, Adam, studied philosophy at University of Poissonny, never completed due to the financial reasons. The love of philosophy must have been inherited to the young Liszt. Throughout his life, Liszt always made strong connections between music and literature. When powerful music meets powerful narrative, the combination is a masterpiece, such as this benediction, the Dieu dan la solitude. Liszt gave a preface to this piece taken from a passage of Lamartine, Harmony Poetic et Religious, to preface the benediction. I have a good friend of mine, David Paul, to read this passage, and let's hear this with the music that Liszt wrote. Whence comes to me, O oh my God, this peace that overwhelms me? Whence comes this faith in which my heart abounds? To me, who just now, uncertain, agitated, and on the waves of doubt, buffeted by every wind, sought goodness, truth in the dreams of the wise, and peace in the hearts resounding with fury. When barely on my brow a few days have slipped by, it seems that a century and a world have passed, and that, separated from them by a great abyss, a new man is born again within me and starts anew. Liszt was a very profound man, and often he was so absorbed to write music after being inspired by the thoughts of great philosophers. Liszt often falls as the victim of severe stereotyping from those who do not really know him, as if his music is shallow, mere flashy showcase. But majority of his output are masterpieces of profound nature. And just like Paganini, who inspired Liszt to bring out the most out of the instrument, few even regarded Liszt as demonic. 
True that with his pianistic wizardry, Liszt loved and was effortlessly able to entertain, to amuse his audience with impossible or never seen before spectacles on the piano. For example, Liszt transcribed orchestra works for solo piano that surely would not fail to mesmerize his audience, but never without a purpose, never just for a show off. Liszt transcribed and performed a symphony, for instance, was to promote lesser known composers. He was a man with a heart of gold. We need to separate Liszt as the person from his legendary professions, the first touring solo pianist. It is a definite misassumption that concertizing was Liszt's only ambition. In fact, few times Liszt withdrew himself from the crowd. Only few know that he intended to go to a seminary, but his father completely against that. Liszt started concertizing at the age of nine. After little Liszt made a good fortune from his concerts, his father gave up his job to become little Liszt concert manager, a successful one. From the age of nine and all the way to 16, Liszt was a touring prodigy, abandoning his formal education at school. Liszt quitted this scheme right after his father's unexpected death in 1827. Liszt was then focusing on catching up the lack of formal education. More than a decade later, around 1840, Liszt restarted his concertizing life. His concert tour lasted for almost a decade, then he retired from the concert stages in 1848. This time, he was focusing more on composing upon the advice of Carolina Susanne Wittgenstein. Let me now focus on this one stage of Liszt's life, that is his age 9 to 16. As the only child in the family, traveling alone with his father, this can be the two possible impacts. First, becoming used to be alone, befriended by heavy philosophical books. Two, longing to have companions. It seems these two impacts that made him to be a solitary and at the same time a social individual. These two giants consistently wrestling within him throughout his life. Shortly after Liszt retired from the concert stages at 16, he went into a depression, exhausted from fulfilling the large crowd enthusiasms, and it was at this stage of life and this kind of mental conditions that this piece, Benediction de Dieu dans la Solitude, was written. Here is a brief historical background. Liszt completed the reconstructions of his Harmony by the Religious in 1847 and published the set in 1853. Liszt often revised his own works. Same with this set, Harmony Poetic et Religious, which had already appeared in 1834. Benediction, the Dieu Dana Solitude, is number three in this final set. Liszt was inspired by Lamartine's writing Harmonic Poetic et Religious. Lamartine was a well-known and esteemed French poet and statesman. Another composition of Liszt that was inspired from Lamartine's writing is Liszt's symphonic poem number three. Le Prelude, which speaks about a series of beginnings, one prelude after another, from the journey of a man, from the mysterious birth of existence to the final glory. Benediction de Dieu dans la Solitude similarly speaks about the new man that is after God's blessings rises above the turbulent past. The combinations of thoughts and souls, ideas and music, world of philosophy and world of sound are the strong magnet that draws people to this set and this piece. Here is the preface to the entire set Harmony Poetic and Religious. My friend David is going to read this. Let's hear his reading with a little bit of the music that Liz wrote. There are some meditative souls that solitude and contemplation raise inevitably towards ideas that are infinite, that is towards religion. All their thoughts are converted into enthusiasm and prayer, all their existence is a mute hymn to the divine and to hope. They seek in themselves and in the creation that surrounds them steps to climb to God, expressions and images to reveal him to them and to reveal themselves to him. I would that I could lend them some of these. There are hearts broken by sorrow, held back by the world, who take refuge in the world of their thoughts in solitude of soul, to weep, to wait, or to worship. I would that they might be visited by a muse, solitary like them, to find sympathy in their harmonies, and to say sometimes, as they listen, We pray with your words, we weep with your tears, we call on God with your songs.
The opening of this speech is evoking a sense of adoration, a sense of or reverence in a perfect setting of the solitude that the music provides. I like to mention these quotations from Lamartine that Liszt used as the preface to the set because this is Liszt's life from teenager's ideal of becoming a priest until his late years of taking priesthood post. They seek in themselves and in the creations that surrounds them steps to climb to God. The music Liszt wrote beautifully captures the yearning of man's soul. Perhaps that is why Liszt started the melody in a cello-like lower register that will go higher and higher. Here is my favorite passage. Deep beneath the surrounding peace is brewing the restlessness of the soul. And this restlessness is only to meet the silence of the solitude. And that is expressed in the single word F sharp. List as a celebrity must have floods of fans, but very few true friends. I could sense a loneliness here in that single note climax. Now to the middle sections of this piece. I interpreted the middle sections of benediction to this part of the quotations. A new man is born again within me and starts anew. I love how List beautifully captures this delicate rebirth. Before, I was puzzled why in the middle of the piece Liszt wrote the indication quasi-preludio instead of the more appropriate intermezzo. But now it dawns to me, the final punchline from the preface, a new man is born again within me and starts anew. This is the sections between the middle part and the final recapitulations, the maturing journey of the newborn before coming out gloriously. And here is the recapitulations like a butterfly beautifully and magically coming out, full of colors and ready to reach the sky. The florid accompaniment sounds like the uplifting wind. And now to the end of this piece. I believe here is the part of the benediction. This is not the end, but the sending of the newborn man, full of assurance, by the blessings of God. Life can be cruel at times. Liz, as a celebrity, experienced well that cruelty. We all experience the same cruelty, injustice, rejections, disappointment, and countless others. And this is what I like the most from this piece, blessings of God in the solitude. Amidst the crowding life, we find blessings in quietness, and thus, we start anew.